of all the people in the world having sex, of which there are very, very many, <laughs> why did I have to be the one to get HIV? I've lived in London for over 10 years now. And back in 2016, I just finished drama school. And I was working as an actor, going from job to job, um, enjoying my life in London, to be honest. Um, and being single, being a young single gay man, I was going out and meeting lots of, lots of other guys. I was pretty well educated in sexual health. Um, but there was one particular weekend where I hadn't been as, as responsible as perhaps I knew I ought to be. I had a finger prick HIV test and that came back as negative. So I left the clinic feeling pretty satisfied. They called me a week later on July the 11th, 2016, asking me to come back in. I took one of my best friends with me just because I knew that something was up. And then I was told um, that the blood test that they'd taken from my arm had come back as positive for HIV. Um, I remember that it was five minutes past five and then the world stopped. In that appointment, I wasn't really able to take anything in. I think I can remember her telling me that I wasn't going to die, but other than that, I can't remember much. I couldn't help but think, why me, you know? Um, of all the people in the world having sex, of which there are very, very many, <laughs> why did I have to be the one to get HIV? I threw myself into my work and my life and keeping busy, keeping distracted, not having to think about it too much. I think at one point in August, I was in two different plays at one time, traveling across London on the tube to get from one stage to the other in the same evening. And it wasn't until the following year when I went away to New Zealand that I really stopped and really began to process my diagnosis. In the spring of 2017, I was lucky enough to be offered some work, uh, some performing work over in Australia. And then afterwards, I decided to go traveling um, across New Zealand. I booked this excursion um, to visit the glaciers, which are like halfway down the South Island. Got into this helicopter and flew up onto uh, Fox Glacier. From down below, it looks tiny. When you're up there, you realize it is miles upon miles big. It would take days to walk from one side of it to the other. I sat down at the edge of the glacier in this silence with the sun shining down, but with a big wall of ice right in front of me. I had this feeling of perspective. I'm one of millions of people in the world living with HIV. I'm one of billions of people living on the world. Our world is just one of the planets in the solar system. I am just one tiny bit of nature. That was the moment when I realized that I had what it takes to go on living with HIV and live well with HIV. After I got back from New Zealand, I decided to shift my focus a bit. And as well as being an actor, I now work in HIV support and I work as a patient representative in my own HIV clinic. Um, I try and use the sense of perspective that I got in New Zealand when I help other people living with HIV. Of course, I have good and bad days. Of course, there are days when I totally forget how I felt when I was sat on that glacier. But it is possible to reclaim it, even if you're not sat on the edge of a glacier and you're sat on the tube. It can be possible to find that sense of calm. It just takes a bit more work.
my advice to anyone struggling with some difficult news like a diagnosis is remember that that doesn't define you. The same way that you don't define the universe, your problems don't define you. And we are just one part of a big, sprawling, beautiful world. That might make us feel small, but it also makes me feel special.